Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Rehab Your Life Lunch and Learn series. Um, this week, this is episode number four, and um, we're answering the question, what is rehabilitation counseling? And so, you know, I've been a counselor for several years now, um, going on, ooh, 10 10, maybe 11 years um, as a counselor. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say myths, but there's a lot of differences between a licensed professional counselor and a CRC. And so what I wanted to do today um, in our session is to really be able to break down what rehabilitation counseling is. And um, I'm not going to talk about licensed professional counseling. I'm just going to kind of focus in on um, what rehabilitation counseling is. And um, then it's just going to be a quick and dirty kind of presentation. I'm not going to provide a lot, a lot of information. You can always Google the information um, to learn more for yourself. Um, but this is just a lightweight lunch and learn series on rehabilitation counseling. And so um, I'm going to give a high level overview of kind of the definitions, talk very briefly in reference to some of the laws and um, and um, and then go into the service delivery model and how you can benefit from rehabilitation counseling. So let's get started. I always like to start by um, kind of rehashing who I am and what I am doing here. And so my name is Karen Malone. I am the founder and executive director of Rehab Your Life Incorporated. Um, I have a master's of rehabilitation counseling. I am a certified rehabilitation counselor and my undergraduate is in workforce education, training and development. And so we do a little bit of all of that through Rehab Your Life. And my motto is in order to rehab your life, you have to renew your mind. And so that is the focus really at the end of the day. Um, with what we do at Rehab Your Life because, um, you know, challenging the way that we think and being able to put some action plans and steps in place to be able to reach our goals, sometimes, most often, more than not, require you to have a change of mind, reset your mind, renew your mind. So, Last time, I actually didn't do this particular um, part of it, but I want, wanted to um, do an icebreaker and ask how many people utilize VR services in Texas. So I have the comments up. If you want to chime in, you can. If not, that's okay too. But there is a vocational rehabilitation agency in all 50 states. A lot of people don't know about the program or they may know it under a different, um, depending on the different services that are more prevalently used. But every state has a department of rehabilitation. And there are people utilizing these services because they're federal dollars that are matched with state dollars in order to be able to provide the service. And so um, the state of Texas matches dollars with the federal government from the Rehabilitation Services Agency um, to be able to provide services to Texans. Um, and so, and also in whatever state you reside in, let's say I'm originally from Illinois. So the Illinois Department of Rehabilitation matches funds with the federal government Rehabilitation Services Agency to provide services to Illinoisans. And so every state has a Department of Rehabilitation and funds that are um, made available to provide services to their residents who have experienced a medical um, condition. And so 
let me show you how many people actually utilize the services in the state of Texas. 94,476 people have been served in the state of Texas, according to the Rehabilitation Council of Texas 2019 annual report. I was not able to find a 2020 report. I don't know if that had anything to do with the pandemic or not, but um, a little under 100,000 people. Now, just to put that into context, the state of Texas has 28 million people in the state. There are offices in um, many of the major cities within Texas, and each major city has about 10 offices to serve that area. And so there are a lot of counselors, a lot of um, offices that you are able to connect with. But as you can see, it's a very small percentage of people that actually utilize and or were served by the Texas Workforce Commission Vocational Rehabilitation Program. And I encourage you to go to their website to learn more about these services. I'm going to highlight some of those, but learn more about the services so that we can take advantage of these services. It's not enough people utilizing the program, as you can see. So like I said, I'm just going to give a very brief definition of rehabilitation counseling, and I'm going to kind of highlight just a couple of um, the laws that are uh, go hand in hand with rehabilitation counseling counseling. But I wanted to show this particular picture because advocacy makes the difference. Being able to get out there and peacefully protest or represent in some kind of way to be able to um, push these initiatives through makes all the difference in the world. So the definition of rehabilitation counseling is a systematic process which assists persons with physical, mental, developmental, cognitive, and emotional disabilities to, to achieve their personal, career, and independent living goals in the most integrated setting possible through the application of the counseling process. The counseling process involves communication, goal setting, and beneficial growth or change through self-advocacy, psychological, vocational, social, and behavioral interventions. So that was a mouthful. But basically, rehabilitation counseling is being able to work with someone who has had a physical, mental, developmental, or emotional challenge to help them establish goals and be able to reach those goals in a community setting. And so it's not just one specific disability. It covers a variety of medical conditions, which is what I like to call them, um, that include autism, Asperger's, multiple sclerosis, um, diabetes, a, a lot of the physical disabilities where you, know, you may have someone who's a quadriplegic. Um, it covers the gambit of medical conditions that have caused disability where the person is not able to manage their life independently and may require support. It's not specific to vocational. However, most programs are called vocational rehabilitation counseling. So there's some different aspects of rehabilitation counseling versus vocational rehabilitation counseling where you get some of those same services, but the focus is always on employment. And so some of the laws that are associated with, um, you know, managing uh, disabilities and being able to um, live your life is the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. Um, that's one where um, most Americans are probably most familiar with. The purpose of the law is to ensure that people with disabilities have the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. And the ADA guarantees this for people with disabilities in all aspects of daily life, from employment opportunities to being able to purchase goods and services, to participating in state and local government programs and services. And um, 
Title I of the ADA protects the rights of both the employees and job seekers. And so I know you've also heard of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and the EEOC um, has fact sheets that describe how the ADA applies to employees with certain types of medical conditions such as cancer, diabetes, and epilepsy. So there's a lot of good information out there around these um, laws that were put into place to help protect individuals with um, disabilities. And also the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits disability discrimination. And so this is one of those landmark um, pieces of legislation that really made some changes that impacted people with disabilities um, as a whole in reference to them being able to access services and um, having buildings to be able to accommodate their ability to even get into the building. And so like I said, just a brief overview of the definition and some of the laws that are associated with um, rehabilitation counseling. So let's talk about what does a rehabilitation counselor do? Um, the job of the rehabilitation counselor is primarily to utilize one-on-one -on -one or group counseling procedures to provide case management, advocacy, job development and placement services to bring about improved functioning and satisfaction in the personal, educational, vocational, and social aspects of life. So it's not only just focused on employment. You have to be able to take in consideration a holistic approach to what all is going on in the person's life to be able to help them fully understand how they can get from where they are to where they want to be. And so, like I said, I wasn't going to take a really deep dive into the difference between a licensed professional counselor and a certified re rehabilitation counselor. Um, but there are differences between are they licensed or are they certified? And for a rehabilitation counselor, we are actually certified. We are certified through the Commission on Rehabilitation Counselor Certification called CRCC. And this organization grants certification to counselors who meet the educational requirements and have passed an exam indicating that they possess the competency and skills to become a certified rehabilitation counselor. And you have to have a master's degree or higher in order to obtain certification. So no, we are not licensed. However, we are certified by the state of Texas through the Federal Rehabilitation Services Agency's program where they have a program uh, called the Commission on Rehabilitation Cert Counselor Certification. So now that I got all of those particulars out of the way, I told you a little bit about, um, you know, what the definition of rehabilitation counseling was. Also talked about the laws that are associated with it. And I'm sure many of you have heard of some of those laws. Um, I now want to kind of just tell you about the process. This is where some people kind of, you know, get lost in the cracks or don't understand the process. So, you know, they never make it all the way through. And the um, local state agency um, that manages the federal rehabilitation services program is Texas Workforce Commission. It was previously Texas Rehabilitation Commission, TRC. Then it moved to DARS, the Department of Assistive and Rehabilitative Services. Now it is under TWC and their vocational rehabilitation program. And so um, you can Google Texas Workforce Commission VR program and it'll give you information out there. Um, but I wanted to kind of, because I worked for DARS as a counselor, I understand the process. And a lot of this information is available online. But when you first make contact with the rehabilitation agency, that's called an initial contact. They get your basic information, put you in the system. That does not make you a client, though. That just means that there's been contact. So after that initial contact, if you did not get an appointment scheduled in that call, someone will follow up with you and call you back to make an appointment. That should take a week, maybe two weeks, 
But if you don't hear back from someone, you have to give them a call because you'll just be in their system as an initial contact. But there's nothing that really prompts them to follow back up with you um, other than just maybe a, a message or a note on that day when they were counselor of the day and were accepting initial contacts. So it's up to you to fully establish that connection because counselors have over sometimes 80 to 100 clients. And so um, I'm going to just be real. You have to make sure that you get into the system. So after the initial contact and they bring you in for an appointment, after the appointment, they have up to 60 days to determine your eligibility for services. That seems like a long time. However, during that time, if you've told them about a doctor that you've been seeing, they are requesting medical records to be able to see that information, not just hear it from you, but get that information in writing from your doctor. If you do not have a doctor that you are working with or it's been a while, they may send you out for an appointment. And this is the assessment phase where they're going to send you out, get that report back, um, review that report. It might be something else that they need to another doctor's appointment that they need to send you out to. So that's what that 60 days of determining eligibility can be used for. Sometimes you bring in enough medical information. They're able to determine you eligible right away based on the relevant information. Anything greater than three years old, though, most of the time they will request some updated evaluations. Now, the good thing is that if they were to request some additional medical documentation, they will pay for that themselves. So once you've been determined eligible, it can take up to 90 days from that point to be able to develop, to excuse me, to develop your individualized plan for employment. So during that time, they may have you looking at um, career options that you might want to um, pursue. They may be looking um, at your work history, looking at your educational history, and kind of determining and working with you to select a vocational goal that can be placed on the plan and services provided for that is within your strengths and being able to identify those skills and abilities that you have. You know, we don't want to set anyone up for failure and putting a goal on there that's not obtainable within a reasonable amount of time. So you want to be able to select a goal that is reasonable, that is accomplishable within less than two years primarily, um, and then be able to start utilizing those services and accomplish that goal. And while you are going through the process of um, utilizing the services, they're going to be providing you what's called counseling and guidance connecting with you to be able to see how it's going, what do you need, are you having any roadblocks, things of that nature. Um, and then let's say you finalize, you know, whatever education or you found a job, then you have to maintain that employment for a minimum of 90 days for them to get credit for helping you. So it's a very extensive process. It can take a long time in terms of um, getting in the system, getting a job, and then closing out your case. But it's to their best interest to provide you with the support services so that you can successfully have obtained employment and maintained employment for at least a minimum of 90 days. So once you have maintained employment, they are going to talk to you about closing your case. And in my experience as a counselor, a lot of times people get a little antsy and they don't want their case closed. Well, there is such a thing as post-closure services. So even if they were to close your case because you did, in fact, reach your goal, maintain employment, you know, then they can rightfully close the case. But if you need additional supports, they can reopen the case in what's called post-closure, help you again with whatever you may need that's time limited, and then close out the case again. So there's no downside to going through the process, closing the case, because you will be able to revisit that again. 
Now, if it's been a long time since your case was closed, they may say you need to restart the process. But again, if it has not been greater than three years, the, the medical documentation that you provided at the very beginning would still be relevant and they would be able to determine you eligible um, right away. Now, they may decide that they want to send you for an updated evaluation. That's absolutely fine to further determine whether or not you are still currently eligible for services. So I know I shared a lot there. This information is available online and I will share their uh, website information with you um, at the end. So now let's talk about how you can benefit from rehabilitation uh, counseling services. So if you or someone you know has suffered a stroke or had a physical disability or has a mental health issue, they can benefit from rehabilitation counseling. And again, it's not any specific medical condition. So don't count yourself out because you don't have those that I identify, but definitely, you know, look at how whatever medical condition is impacting your life and being able to help you to live a normal life again is what rehabilitation counseling is all about. And so the number one benefit is that you'll feel more confident. You'll have someone that can understand what it is that you're going through and how you can, um, how they can help you. They're knowledgeable about the, the rehabilitation process and what's needed. So that can improve your self-esteem by working with someone one-on-one -on -one, um, where you can um, create a plan and be able to see the future. Um, the second thing about rehabilitation counseling is that they can put you into some programs, some physical therapy, some, um, depending on what it is that you're struggling with, um, put you into a program to help you to be able to rehabilitate that. You know, no one wants to be in chronic pain all the time, and you need to be able to learn how you can reduce your pain as your body heals. And so, you want to be able to take advantage of rehabilitation counseling during that time so that way you can experience less pain. Number three, you'll be more active. You know, they will have you going to a program or uh, coming to visit with them and getting you out and about and moving your body is definitely something that is going to um, be advantageous for you. You know, regardless of your current limitations, therapy will help you to begin to move comfortably, you know, both inside and outside of your home. And number four, you'll pursue your goals. You know, if your body is hurting and you're hurting mentally, you know, you're going to fall into depression and nobody wants you to be able to experience depression and not fully enjoyed life. And so working one-on-one -on -one with someone like myself as a certified rehabilitation counselor, you know, we're going to keep you encouraged and we're going to keep you moving forward towards reaching those goals. And number five, our hope is that you will also learn new skills because as I said in my quote, you know, in order to rehab your life, you have to renew your mind. And so in order to renew your mind, you got to be open to learning new skills. You may participate in some meditation, or exercise and stretching. And there's all kinds of ways that you can practice self-care. So those are the top five benefits, in my opinion, for utilizing rehabilitation counseling. And so you're like, okay, that sounds good to me. How do I get connected? Well, the state of Texas program for the vocational rehabilitation is available under the Texas Workforce Commission. So you would just need to get your computer or go to the library, get on your phone, however you can get onto the internet, www.twc.state.tx.us. Now we have applied to become a vendor of TWC, which is one of the community rehabilitation programs that they would reach out to, to help support provide some of the support services. And so um, once we are fully in their system as a vendor, you'll be the first to know. But until then, we do provide some of those same support services 
under Rehab Your Life at a sliding scale fee. So if you would like to work with us, you don't think that you'll qualify for any state programs, you can connect with us. We are located at 7171 Highway 6 North, Suite 116 in Houston. Um, our phone number is 281-849-1307. And you can check us out on the web at rehabyourlife.org. So thank you guys so much for um, joining me over the lunch hour for another Lunch and Learn um, series, um, What is Rehabilitation Counseling? So I hope you enjoyed the information that I shared and reach out to us. Have a great rest of your lunch. <music>